Susan. Mr. Squire states that the Lucky Roofing Company inadequately shingled his roof, resulting in serious water damage to his bedroom and warping the mirror on his ceiling. <laughs> in fact, every time it rains, it rains... Every time it rains... It... <laughs> every time it rains, it rains. And he's from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains hot? And he's from heaven. You would find your fortune falling all over town. Be sure. So Mr. Squire seeks $10,000 in damages. Ignore the singing part, Susan. That was great. You want to hear an encore? Nah, I'll catch you on solid gold. <laughs> What are you doing the 24th? I don't know, why? It's a big surprise. No, oh, I don't like surprises. Not since my fraternity brothers found me a blind date. I think they once chased her in Jeeps on American Sportsman. <laughs> Dave, I'm really getting close with my swim man stereo diving mask. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Music to spear a flounder by. <laughs> It's also a safety device. Each musical cassette lasts exactly as long as your air supply. So at the end of the tape, a voice says, if you hear this, you may already be drowning. <laughs> That's not bad. Guys, what are you doing on the night of the 24th? Why? It's a big surprise, I can't tell you. You're getting married. No. We're getting married? No. Us? <laughs> Think about it, David. One night with me and you'd know what being a man's all about. <laughs> Beth, this surprise is, uh, is different. Oh, I wish I could tell you. Give us a clue. Come on, Mick. Okay, okay, one clue. Uh, Mariana's Trench. Mariana's Trench. <laughs> the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. It's 36,198 feet deep. A triangle with equal opposite angles is an isosceles triangle. Einstein discovered the theory of relativity and the largest export from Malaysia is him. Him? I thought he was one of the three stooges. <laughs> I'm getting my high school diploma. <laughs> I've been going to night school. When? At night. <laughs> Oh, please say you'll come to my graduation. <laughs> oh, we wouldn't miss your graduation for anything. Oh, yeah. thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. Hey, I gotta get a few kinks out of this thing. Let's hop in the bathtub together. Okay. And then later we can test the mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. David, did you know that some of the greatest minds in the history of the world have been high school graduates? Henry Kissinger, Jonas Salk, and mostly cast on Dynasty. <laughs> Why are you grinning at me like that? Oh, I don't know. You're so happy. It's just pouring out of you. Maybe it's contagious. School is so much fun now. It's not like before. Remember how you used to hate to go to school? No. But all kids hated school. No. Well, well remember how anxious we all were for summer vacation? No. <laughs> I used to spend my summers reading my school books. You must have slammed my shut on your head. <gasps> oh, I've got to get to class. My assignment last week was to write a short story for English. Oh, we're supposed to be getting our grades tonight. You nervous? No, I... You're wearing my coat. <laughs> oh, I hope Mr. Brown likes my story. You know, writing could open lots of doors for me. I could write advertising copy, or for a newspaper, or a magazine, or even books or plays. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of me, too. Once I get that piece of paper, I'll be somebody. Well, Mick, you're already somebody. Yeah, but I, I mean an official, educated somebody. <sighs> I'll be like William F. Buckley in a dress. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. You'll find your fortune <laughs> all over town. Sure 
Hey, Mr. Franklin. Yeah. I got the color TV you wanted. <laughs> when in doubt, ask Enrique Alvarez. He delivers. Oh, gracias, amigo. Now, would you do me a favor and take it to my car later? Because, uh, you see, a black man walking through the streets with a TV set is asking for a chokehold. <laughs> no problem. I got it used in this motel. Uh -huh. It works perfect. Good. But you got to put a quarter every 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm impressed. It's nothing. Just another step up the ladder of commerce. I already cornered the market on velvet paintings of Julio Iglesias. You're going to be a professional man like my good friend Joe. Some way, a professional man, he's a butcher at the slaughterhouse. Excuse me, but I like to think of myself as a surgeon for hindquarters. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't see you. No one ever does. I have no charisma at all. Once my husband walked into our apartment and sat on me. <laughs> Hey, Nikki, would you come over here a second? Hi, Mr. Franklin. I was the prettiest little girl in New York. <laughs> you know, if I was only 50 years younger, I'd still be too old for you. You must have been something in your day. <laughs> I'm something now. <laughs> oh, I wish Mr. Brower would get here. I really want to find out my grade. Relax, relax. You're going to do fine. Well, I think I did a good job. It's just real important for me to do well. I think I did very well with my story. How do you think you did with your story? I wonder if a red dress would help. <laughs> okay, here we go again. Sorry I'm late. What is this, an apple for the teacher? What apple? I brought you a leg of lamb. <laughs> Half of the people I graduated with got Pulitzer Prizes. I get a dead sheep. Excuse me, Mr. Brower? Yes, Miss McKenzie. Uh, did you get a chance to read over our short story? Sure, I read every gem. Will you please pass these out, Mr. Shumway? Mr. Franklin. Thank you. Shirley? It's Alice. So how do we do? Fine, just fine. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? <laughs> well, it be a red dress with lights on it. Yeah, I got a B, too. So did I. Me, too. Excuse me. Yes, Miss McKenzie? Uh, you didn't write any comments on, on my short story. I know. Well, what do you think? I think you got a B. Yeah, but see, I wanted to... Don't, don't, don't make any waves. This is the first B in four generations of shum waves, huh? <laughs> but how come we all got these? Because B is a good grade, and it will help you get a high school diploma. That's what you're all here for, isn't it? I thought we were here to learn. <laughs> to learn? To learn. Well, let's say we test that theory, shall we? Mr. Alvarez, why are you taking English? I needed a foreign language. <laughs> so, Mr. Alvarez isn't here just to satisfy his thirst for knowledge, but I'm sure the rest of you are. Mr. Shumway, your work was most memorable. <laughs> why don't you read us the beginning of your short story? Rhett Butler idly flicked dust from his sleeve. Something in Scarlett O'Hara's... Practical. Something in Scarlett O'Hara's practical mind prompted the thought that what this man said was right. They Sounds s kind of familiar. Go on the way now. That, that, that was a great book. I guess you haven't exactly created a short story for us. Are you kidding? That book was 900 pages long. I cut it down to two. <laughs> See, Miss McKenzie, not everyone is here for an education. End of discussion. But this is important to me. I really want to know what you think of my writing. We don't have time. Mr. Brower, I... 
Okay, okay. Why don't you read a little bit of your story for us? Flying High, a romance by Mickey McKenzie. <laughs> Unbeknownst to the stewardesses, Vanessa and Captain Morgan... Excuse me, Miss McKenzie. Are your characters flying in a 15th century airplane? No, why? That's the last time anyone used the word unbeknownst. <laughs> you don't have a forsooth or a privy coming up for us, do you? No. That's a relief. Why don't you read some more? That's okay. I don't have to. Oh, please. I'm sure everyone would like to hear how Vanessa watches Dawn shoot its shimmering rays through the dank coverlet of the velvet night. And they'll love to hear how her skin... Uh, Mr. Breyer, don't you think you've been a little rough on her? I call it being honest. Was it really that bad? Quite frankly, Miss McKenzie, giving you a B was an act of charity. I've read more creative writing on washroom walls. Hi. How'd it go? <laughs> What's uh, wrong? Let me rephrase that. Are you going to hurt me? Mr. Barry hated my story. Come on, Mick, that's nothing. Nothing? Yeah, so he didn't like this story. Next week, you'll write a better one. There's not going to be a next week. What are you talking about? Mickey McKenzie getting a diploma. Who needs it? High school stinks. I'm quitting. I can't believe you're quitting. Well, I am. I should just crawl into bed and sleep it off. Sleep what off? Have you been drinking? Eating. <laughs> That's what us Mackenzie's do when we get real depressed. When Uncle Fergus got divorced, he took his half of the furniture and moved into a pizza hut. <laughs> did you know there are 14 hot dog stands between school and here? Oh, Mick, you didn't. And do yourself a favor. Keep away from International House of Wieners. Hot dogs do not go well with maple syrup. <laughs> I can't believe you could eat 14 hot dogs. I did, and now I need a chaser. <laughs> One of the great things about life is that no matter how bad things are today, there's always tomorrow. And tomorrow's gonna be a brighter day. I did learn something in that class. What's that? How to recognize cliches. <laughs> Sorry. Walking up Broadway, there were a bunch of kids laughing across the street. And I felt like they knew, like Mr. Brower had told them how lousy I was, and they were all laughing at me. <sighs> David, I made a total fool out of myself. Oh, come on, Mick. We all do that. My first day of law school was the scariest day of my life. My professor, T. George Osterwald, asked me a question, and I answered it. I define the Bill of Rights as the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution. You didn't. Yeah. <laughs> wanted to crawl out of town that night, but I stayed because I wanted to be a lawyer more than anything in the world. I guess that must have impressed old Osterwald. The next time he saw me, you know what he said to the class? What? Let's give the dummy another chance. <laughs> Thanks, David. That's a really up story. <laughs> Nick, don't you get it? Sure, I made a fool out of myself, but the world didn't crumble. I'm a lawyer today, and I am because I stuck it out. He ripped my story apart. He laughed at me. So? Nick, you loved what you were learning. You know what I saw on your face this afternoon? Joy. And that's not easy to come by. You can't give that up just because of some creep. You're very sweet. You gonna go back? He's gonna make fun of me again. No, he won't. Yes, he will. No, he won't. I can promise you that. Here's to you. Oh, Mr. Fowler, you gotta believe me, man. I really did my homework. I have an excuse for not having it. Save it. 
You'll never top last week's. You know when that poltergeist sucked your term paper into the television set? <laughs> I'm afraid I'll have to give you an F. Oh. Can I have an extension? One hour. All right. Uh, how, how long does that paper have to be? 150 pages. No problem. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Brower? Yes? My name is David Tucker. Can I speak to you? Yeah, but just for a second, my class is about to start. Oh, that's okay. I have to get back to work myself. What do you do? I'm a lawyer. Don't you think it's a little late to get a high school diploma? <laughs> Actually, I'm here about one of your students, Mickey McKenzie. I thought you might like to know how destroyed she was after school last night. Not really. Maybe I'm not getting through to you. See, Mickey works for me. School is very important to her. She put her heart into that story and you kicked her in the teeth. Her story was junk. What kind of a teacher are you? Look, this isn't a tutorial at Oxford. My job isn't to educate people, it's to pump out high school graduates. These people need a piece of paper so they can drive a bus or wear a white shirt to work. What you did to Mickey was criminal. Look, counselor, I think you better lighten up. Yeah, like hell I will. You're an embarrassment to your profession. The right to learn is something sacred to every American. Something guaranteed to them by their constipational rights. <laughs> you uh, know what I mean. <laughs> Mr. Tucker, you're a very impassioned advocate. But it seems to me that your concern for Miss McKenzie goes a bit beyond the standard employer-employee relationship. Is there a little something going on between the two of you? One more remark like that, Jack, and I'll flatten you. Mr. Tucker, I have spent 20 years in the blackboard jungle. I've got moves that make hell's angels beg for mercy. You don't look so tough to me. Oh, yeah? Ah! <laughs> All right. All right, you win. But you do one more thing to hurt Mickey. You'll have to carry a blackboard with you for the rest of your life. Hey, uh, Alice. How do you like my new attaché case? I like it, Enrique. It's perfect for the young man on the way to the top. Is it real alligator? No, it's Naga height. You know how many Nagas had to die to make this? <laughs> Amazing. You see, Joe, my son already told his boss he's going to need a day off to come to my graduation. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be there. And my grandson is going to be there. Even little Willie, my great-grandson, is going to be there. Then the week after that, I'll be there when little Willie gets out of college. <laughs> Hi, you, you know in the class? <laughs> Hi, Mickey. Hey, Mickey, sit over here. I'm glad you're back. You kidding? I knew she'd be back. The girl's got bread. Hi, guys. Hey, Mick. I'm really glad you came back. You see, they're always putting people like us down. We gotta fight back. You know? We're like those clowns, those plastic clowns with the sand on the bottom. You know? Wham! <laughs> we gotta bounce back. And Ricky, you're really good for a girl who's kind of down. Uh, hey, listen, I got more brains in my whole body than he's got in his little finger. <laughs> Something like that. All right, everybody, sit. Oh, no, Mr. Bauer, I, 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 found, I, found, my, uh, I found my homework, so maybe you could take that, that F, F back and give me my usual D. If there are no chicken liver stains on it, you get A+. Plus. <laughs> Miss McKenzie. Look, Brower, if you think you're going to make a fool out of me in front of this class again, forget it. Because I'm here to learn whether you like it or not. So you're not going to intimidate me if that's what you think. It isn't. Oh. oh. Could we start over? Uh, you just call on me and I'll stand up and be nice. Would you please come up here? I'd like you to read something to the class. Don't do it, Mickey. It's a trap. <laughs> Just read it and tell me what you think. Um, she 
had a peaches and cream complexion, and her lips were like cherries freshly picked from the tree. Her eyes like the bluest blueberry. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I'm not sure if this is a girl or a fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, please. <clears throat> um, she slunk sexily six seats sideways to sit beside Sam, the sensational seminarian. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Seems sort of silly. <laughs> I wrote that. Great stuff, man. Out of sight. I meant silly in the best sense of the word. I'm sorry. You mean you think it's good now? No. I mean, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. If I'd known, I would have found a nicer way to tell you it, it stinks. I wrote that when I was in high school. My teacher didn't say anything about it at all. She just laughed. And I went home and I threw up. And I never tried to be a writer again. I was 16 years old, and already I felt like a failure. Mr. Brower, you don't have to do this. Yes, I do. Because what I did to you last night made you feel like a failure, and that was wrong. I forgot how much that can hurt. Mr. Brown, Will really, you shut I... up? <laughs> I'm not through being nice. <laughs> Mickey, all of you, it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks of you. It only matters what you think of yourself. So don't let some bitter person like me stop you from trying. Mr. Brower, are you saying that that just maybe you're feeling a little bit more positive about my story? Let's just say that I found a nicer way to tell you it stinks. <laughs> be so happy to get your high school diploma. <laughs> we graduates refer to it as matriculating. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the nail has been implanted. Now for the formal hanging of the diploma. Careful with that. <laughs> Mick, it's really beautiful. I made a copy for each of you. <laughs> Milky McKenzie. What? Gotcha. <laughs> Come on, Mick, change your clothes and we'll take you out to celebrate. I'm not taking this off. I'm never taking this off. I'm gonna vacuum in it, I'm gonna do dishes in it, I'm even gonna take my showers in it. <laughs> you know, you can dust pretty well with this tassel. <laughs> Come on, Mick, let's go. Okay, I'll change. But while I'm getting dressed, Jay, will you mail this for me? Sure, what is it? My application to Harvard. <laughs> Next on Mama's Family, Mama and Naomi square off in court with an explosive case. Then it's the final showdown between Hollister and the champions on the Yellow Rose. Tomorrow night, Buccaneers Gold sends Michael and Kid on a deadly treasure hunt. But a modern-day pirate makes them walk the plank on Knight Rider. Be there.